Well, first tonight, when all official channels fail, people often turn to the media for help, especially if it means exposing a fraud or a crim. And very often, the only undeniable proof is to catch them in the act. And over the years, Today Tonight has caught hundreds. When animal cruelty needs exposing, again, it's the media people turn to. But if the Wetherill government has its way, those inquiries will themselves be illegal. A bill before Parliament is seeking to criminalise any hidden camera investigation by the media in the name of privacy, as Grey Marcher reports. The media does its finest job when it exposes corruption, illegal activity and cruelty. Well, I think it will impact on everybody. This is one story where we need to declare a vested interest in the public interest. That will now be limited by these rules that will put uh, limits in front of how you can do your reporting. Julie Flynn is the CEO of Free TV, representing all free-to-air networks. She's concerned TV in South Australia may no longer be free to do its proper job. What's the rationale for this? And it, it's not clear to us. It seems to be that it is an effort to limit broadcasters and print media journalists' ability to undertake investigative journalism. The Attorney General, John Rowe, has just launched his second attempt to shut down a vital area of investigative journalism in this state. The public at large would suffer most. There's no question about that. Independent MLC John Daly is one amongst a growing number of politicians who see this as a disaster. Investigative journalism, what would be the impact on that? Well, it, it would just stop it in its tracks. And the public have a right to know about a, a number of things. This attack on journalism has been included in a bill aimed at increasing police surveillance powers and protecting privacy, to which no one objects, but this effectively extends the protection to criminals. You can do what you like because the, the barriers that are put placed in the way of the press are so great that uh, uh, it would have no impact on them at all. John Rao wants to outlaw the use of almost any surveillance device in almost any location without the approval of those being filmed. This covers any camera, including mobile phones, and it applies equally to individuals and all the media. Where broadcasters and print journalists are acting in the public interest, elsewhere it is recognised that there should be a public interest exception, including with a recent report of the uh, Australian Law Reform Commission on privacy. There's no system that's broken here. We don't see unnecessary uh, stories going to air, so why is this government trying to fix a problem that doesn't exist? It would mean the end of many investigations like those exposing phony health practitioners. What I'll do is take a photo of your eyes and we'll go through mm. them and then I'll give some alkalizing salts to drink and some female tonic. People who exploit desperate, terminally ill cancer patients. Too much of lactic acid in your body, right. your body is very acidic. Right. That's why you got cancer. Would be free to ply their murky trade, while consumers seeking proof of being conned by dodgy tradesmen. We are suggesting a throttle body service. It does actually have a sticker that says, do not clean the throttle body. Roll up and get ripped off. I've advised a crew on flush as well. There was definitely a bit of over-servicing going on there. Loan sharks. We are financial coaches, OK? We're not advisors. We are coaches, so there's a lot of difference. Um, and that's why we can actually put people out as consultants fairly quickly once they're trained. It's just all one big smoke and mirrors type organisation. Unscrupulous real estate agents and just about any other con man... Well, as we're about to reveal what you see with Joey Russell, or Blind Joey as he likes to call himself, is not what you end up getting. He's in fact a convicted fraudster and a con man who's left his mark in every state. We'll be thrown to the wolves. Hello. Hey, mate. How you going? You know him, don't you? Yeah. You took his money you as well, Joey. 
You've been caught out. Caught out. Blind man's bluff. Is it? Blind man's bluff. Just, oh, he's Joey, blind. You're supposed to be blind. <laughs> Joey, you're supposed to be blind, bro. <laughs> For a blind man, Joey led us on a merry chase through Hobart. The most effective method of proving deception and criminal conduct would, under this bill, itself become a criminal act. What sort of penalties are we talking about? They're fairly substantial, I know that. Mm. Jail terms? Yeah. As for defenceless animals at the mercy of unethical factory farms and puppy breeders, well, there'll be almost nobody coming to save them. That is a demonstration. This dog is disturbed. That is an anxiety. This is disgraceful beyond belief. We know that it's been uh, the act of advocates. We know that it's been Oscar's Law and the Poor Project that exposed the puppy factories in this state. It wasn't the government, it wasn't the police. Greens MP Tammy Franks despairs for animals and the environment if advocates and the media are gagged. Absolutely. Abuses of environment, abuses of workplace rights, abuses of animal uh, welfare, abuses of uh, people's individual rights. These are all things that are exposed uh, and that will be shut down on being able to be exposed under this bill. John Rowe says any such footage could be given to the police. But what if it's of the police themselves misbehaving? Well, exactly, and I think we had an example of that just recently in Whitmore Square, uh, which proves the point. And very often, those cheated by rogues are told by the police that they're civil matters. People usually come to media organisations when everything else they've tried has failed. Even the Law Society is critical of the bill, as is the opposition. And there have been no breaches of the current rules. There's been no prosecutions under the existing legislation covering this area. The only way the media could broadcast such vision would be to go to court and convince a judge that it's in the public interest. Well, it's totally impractical. In the day and age when you have 24-7 news uh, agendas. Um, it's not in anybody's interest. It's totally impractical. It's a waste of the court's time and uh, not to mention the costs to all concerned. And I think it would very quickly unravel. And we've been down that track before. For example, we were blocked by the court from showing evidence of abuse in an Adelaide nursing home, told it wasn't in the public interest. I think, uh, uh, when are going to get uh, uh, other heater figures up? All of a sudden, Dale said, bloody cop. <laughs> and more recently, we were permanently prevented from disclosing hidden camera footage of dope smoking employees at Conroy's abattoirs. It is very disturbing, yes. It is only a matter of time before someone gets killed or injured. This was truly a scandal. Breaches of quarantine regulations, threats to the employees and the public's health. However, the judge decided the commercial interests of Conroy's was at risk. It took us four years to get the matter to trial, which we won at enormous cost. <coughs> Lunchtime, and the workers lit up again, leaving the waste from their pot pipes on the floor and benches. But even worse, almost everything that went on in this change room was a breach of Australian quarantine standards. Listen closely as Quality Assurance Officer Tommy Northcott, just off camera, warned workers about an upcoming inspection by AQUIS, the Government Quarantine Inspection Service. How frequently would you be tipped off that there was going to be a quarantine inspection? Every time there was an inspection. On. Without fail, everyone? Without fail, guaranteed. Four years? Yep. And while our hands were tied during those four years, Conroy's products were associated with the deaths of at least two people struck down by food poisoning. But despite finding 
we should have been allowed to tell our story, the judge ordered Channel 7 to pay most of the costs. Some recognition should be given to Channel 7, having been put to very considerable expense in mounting a defence, which was largely successful, but which failed to a small degree. Conroy's are to recover 75% of their costs of action. Neither Channel 7 nor any other network would want to put themselves through that again. The result, the public go unprotected and the criminals thrive. And if it does get in? Well, I hope that's not the case and I'll be doing all I can to make sure it doesn't. It will also restrict the media's ability to report openly and fearlessly on these issues where let's not forget the people involved in these kind of activities don't want anybody to know what they're doing. This responsibility for shutting down the uh, public interest and the public right to know will be landed fair and square on John Rowe's shoulders. And we did make several attempts to contact the Attorney General, John Rowell, and were eventually told he was first too busy, then on leave. Bad laws, we guess, are hard to defend. Graham Archer with that report. But